Trust me, reading is more powerful than grammar. Hello English Absorbers and welcome to English Absorbed. Today we will be talking about reading books to improve your English. I will not only tell you why it is important to read, but also I'll be giving some personal recommendations of what I think that you should be reading for every level from beginner right through to advanced. Teachers pay attention because these are books that you can also recommend to your students and use in your classes. So this video is for teachers and learners. Let's Dive in. Why should we read a book anyway? Shouldn't we be studying grammar exercises? Basically, no. Reading is actually more powerful than studying grammar. And if I'm learning a language, then I would choose reading over grammar every single time. And if you really think about it, then this is obviously the case. This is because when we're reading, we're actually studying grammar anyway. Books contain grammar and vocabulary. So when you're reading it, you are subconsciously practicing different tenses, prepositions, conditionals, everything, and vocabulary. It's like a, a shower or a, a fire hose for your brain being blasted with grammar and words. It's the best thing that you can do. So I'll go into that in more depth in future videos and some people might disagree, but trust me, reading is more powerful than grammar. Don't worry about using a dictionary to look up every single word that you come across. Just keep going, get to the end of the book and get on to another book. Ideally, you should be understanding about 50 to 80% of what you read. If you understand 100% of everything that you read, then that book is too basic. What you should do is get another book that you understand less. Not understanding is actually a good thing. So let's get to those book recommendations. I am going to separate the recommendations into five separate categories according to level. Beginner or elementary, A1. Pre-intermediate, A2 to B1. Intermediate, B1 to B2. Upper intermediate, B2 to C1. And advanced, C1 to C2. You can just skip ahead to your sections using the chapters at the bottom of the video. You're starting to learn English. That's great. Children's books are what you should be reading. Children's books have very simple sentences in them and they are short, they're not long. So you don't just want to read one or two children's books, you need to read a lot of children's books. Now, these books can be pretty expensive once you start buying 20, 30, 70, 100. So a good place to look might be your local library or search for children's books on YouTube. Children's books don't have to be boring. They can be funny and creative. I love reading children's books. Here are some that I love to start you off. I Want My Hat Back by John Classen. This book has very simple sentences like, have you seen my hat? Present perfect. I recommend reading these very simple sentences and trying to memorize them by heart. The book is basically the story of a bear who has lost his hat and he's trying to get it back. It's very funny, even though the ending is a little bit shocking. The Boring Book by Shinsuke Yoshitake. This book isn't actually boring at all, but it's about how it feels to be bored and what things are boring that make us bored. So it's actually a very good way to study ED and ING adjectives, which my more advanced students still have trouble with. This book constantly says that things are boring and that they make you feel bored and it is a great book. You should also check out any other books by this author, Shinsuke Yoshitake. How to Make Friends with a Ghost by Rebecca Green. This book is probably the most complex of the three, but it's not very complex at all, really. It's basically an instruction book about how to make friends with a ghost. The illustrations are really great. It's a very creative book, I love it. And if you want to make friends with a ghost, then you should try to pick up this book. Remember, read as many children's books as you can. The more, the better. Also, if you have children and you want to teach them English, then 
these are great books to pick up. For pre-intermediate learners, I recommend Anything by Roald Dahl. When I was about six or seven years old, I didn't read anything except for Roald Dahl. There are enough books to keep you busy for a very long time. You could start with James and the Giant Peach. This is an absolutely crazy story about a boy that grows a giant peach to get away from his aunties. I suppose you have to read it. And you could move on to Matilda, which is a book about a young girl who is very smart, but her parents are quite horrible and they don't think that she's very smart. Actually, she's smarter than them. And when you're finished with Matilda, there's a great movie that you could watch for listening practice. There are so many Roald Dahl books. The Witches. The Twits. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Danny the Champion of the World. For more inspiration, go to Goodreads or Amazon and type in Young Adult Fiction. Books that are for readers about six to 10 years old are what you want to be reading. For intermediate learners, you could also look for a little bit of young adult fiction, but maybe increase the age range to 11 plus years. Currently, popular young adult fiction books include The Maze Runner, Speak, and It All Comes Back to You. If you're looking for something a bit different, then I recommend graphic novels. The most popular graphic novel written in English is called Mouse by Art Spiegelman. This is an amazing book. The book depicts Holocaust survivors as mice and Nazis as cats. As I said, it's the story of a Holocaust survivor's experience in the Holocaust. The comic format of the graphic novel with the pictures will help you to follow along with the story if you don't understand some of the vocabulary. It's the ultimate reading and context experience. Other popular graphic novels include Persopolis by Marjane Satrapi, Blankets by Craig Thompson, and Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. As intermediate is a tricky stage in language learning, sometimes your strengths, that is writing, reading, speaking, and listening, can be a little bit varied. You might appreciate something from the last section, pre-intermediate, or the next section, upper intermediate, depending on your skills. At this level, you have a lot of options for things to read. One genre that I think is a great idea is to read an autobiography. Autobiographies are great because they are usually written in an anecdotal format. This means that the writer is telling you stories about their life. And if it's written well, you really feel like the writer is right here in the room with you telling you their story. This is a great example of an autobiography that's written in a very simple way, that's entertaining, but it's clear, and it's perfect for your level of English. A lot of autobiographies are written in a simple and clear way. An autobiography that I'm reading at the moment is the autobiography of Dave Grohl, the drummer from Nirvana and the lead singer of the Foo Fighters. I love Nirvana, I love the Foo Fighters, I'm really interested in Dave Grohl. I do recommend this book, but if you can find an autobiography of somebody that you are personally interested in, this would be a great idea. At the moment, some of the popular autobiographies are Becoming by Michelle Obama, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, and Yearbook by Seth Rogen. All right, well, at this stage, you could read basically anything that you want. But if you really want a recommendation from me, then I recommend A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. This book is hilarious. It's about a guy called Ignatius J. Riley, who is in some ways very smart, but in other ways completely not suited for this world. You'll want to read this book with a notebook and a pen like I did to write down any vocabulary or any of the hilarious things that Ignatius J. Riley says. For instance, I am at the moment writing a lengthy indictment against our century, and when my brain begins to reel from my literary labors, I make the occasional cheese dip. 
obviously there is a lot of stuff out there that you can read. And I hope that this video gave you some ideas of where you can look to get some new material. I do recommend fiction and autobiographies and things like that. Things that are written in kind of a conversational way, the kind of way that people speak to each other. Some of my students say that they love to read scientific articles and self-help, which I think is great, but you probably also want to read some of the things that I've suggested here, because you really want to read things that are close to the way that people actually talk. And a quick shout out to my TikTok subscribers who have recommended a lot of books, which I'll read out to you now and I'll try to put them in order of level. For pre-intermediate students, Diary of a Wimpy Kid by Jeff Kinney, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. For intermediate students, any kind of manga or The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, any books by Colleen Hoover, the Return of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. For upper intermediate students, The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. The Help by Catherine Stockett. From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Atomic Habits by James Clear. The Hobbits by J.R.R. Tolkien. And The Culture Map by Aaron Meyer. Thank you so much for watching English Absorbed. If you liked this video, then please click like and subscribe, share it with your teacher, share it on Facebook. That would be really great. My name is Jesse and I will see you in the next one.